morning. I guess we're not doing a minute of silence again today. I'm not quite sure what that schedule is, but um, so we are going to continue on like we've been doing here where we're going to introduce a little bit of new information and have you practice a little bit of the old information to try to get a good foundation and when we get close to the test um, you won't feel too overwhelmed. Today's part, um, honestly I could tell you how to find the answers in just a minute or two because it's really just one step more than something you learned in Algebra 2 but we'll spend a few more minutes on it so that you can understand why that works the way that it works. So I'll show you how to do that on 74 and then 75 those practice questions is going to take you like I don't know three minutes to do that whole page uh, once you see how to do those. And then the other page I gave you is a one page review so just trying to mix it up instead of doing a Khan Academy assignment today. Uh, I'm calling it a mid-unit review because we're about halfway through this unit and all of the questions on that mid-unit review are questions from past worksheets we've done in the last few classes. So it gives you a good, hopefully a good little snapshot of the stuff that we've done, how well it's sunk in, which type of questions, you know, maybe you could do the day of, but it didn't stick and you at least know that you need to review that before the test rolls around. So this is the one that is 74. This is the notes that we need to talk about. And similar to the last few classes, 95% of the work is algebra stuff that you have seen and done before. And about 10% of it is just transferring that into calculus. But the difference is this algebra, even if you didn't learn it, it's, um, or don't remember it, it's not something that takes very long to pick up on. So on the front page here, we're gonna look at a few that actually have graphs that go with them. And then after that, we don't need the graphs because um, we'll see what we need to focus on. But So here's this function and here's its graph. Again, I'm going to try not to look at the graph until the end. But this is referred to as a rational function. Rational function just basically means it's a fancy way to say a fraction. A function that's a big fraction. So one of the things you should have learned in Algebra 2, and I know this shows up on the ACT, so this is a good little reminder. If you want to know the horizontal asymptote, you have to compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. And the reason there's three examples on this front page is because there's three possibilities. The numerator's degree could be bigger, the denominator's degree could be bigger, or the degrees could be equal. So three cases we have to be aware of. For question one here, the numerator only has a degree of one and the denominator has a degree of three. So this is the example where the degree of the denominator is bigger. And when that's the case, you're supposed to know that he has a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. When the degree of the denominator is bigger than the degree of the numerator in a rational function, the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Now again, in theory, you remember that from Algebra 2, but how that applies to us, and for this, we don't need to do this part for all three of these, but at least for one of them to make a connection to something else you did in Algebra 2. You need to understand what a horizontal asymptote is. If you say the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, you're describing the far left and far right of the graph. It doesn't help us understand anything else in the middle of the graph, but it tells us what the y values it approaches on the far left and the far right. So notice it approaches a y value of zero, it approaches a y value of zero. I knew that algebraically because I can uh, compare those degrees. So you probably even thought about this in Algebra 2 and you probably wrote it something like this. As x approaches negative infinity, so that describes the left side of the graph, y approaches zero, and as x approaches positive infinity, which is the right side of the graph, y approaches zero. Again, I don't really need that picture there. I'm just showing you the picture that is consistent with the horizontal asymptote. That's what a horizontal asymptote is. So um, 
Again, I haven't taught Algebra 2, Honors Algebra 2 in a couple years, so I don't know. It's possible you didn't write it with this notation, um, but I think you probably did a few times. Really, the only difference in how we want to use this in calculus is we don't use this notation. We use limit notation. We can say the limit as x approaches negative infinity is 0 and or the limit as x approaches positive infinity is 0. Either one of those two questions being asked about that function would have to be 0 because that's its horizontal asymptote and that's what horizontal asymptote means. <coughs> it describes the far left and far right values that it approaches. Okay, so uh, another one of the horizontal asymptote rules you're supposed to know is if the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, for ACT and for Algebra 2, you would have said that this has no horizontal asymptote. And what you're really saying is it just doesn't go to the same thing. Or it's going to, um, I'm sorry, more specifically, it's going to something that's not a number, like infinity or negative infinity. Infinity and negative infinity are not really numbers. Those are just ideas, just concepts. <clears throat> So again, we're not really interested in writing it the way you did in Algebra 2, but in calculus we could say the far left this graph goes, well, because he doesn't have a horizontal asymptote, it is either going to infinity or to negative infinity. I can see that he goes up forever. So if you have the graph, you can be slightly more specific, but again, infinity and negative infinity are considered concepts, not numbers. So in calculus, we usually just say does not exist. You can't reach infinity, so it does, that limit doesn't exist. And then basically the exact same thing for the right side of the graph. If you see the graph, which you normally don't, you can see that the further right you go, the further down you go. So if you have a graph, you could describe it as approaching negative infinity. But since negative infinity is not really a number, in calculus we just tend to say does not exist. If it does not have a horizontal asymptote, <coughs> the limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity would not exist. Okay, so if the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, it approaches zero on both sides. If the degree of the numerator is bigger, one side is going to infinity, one side is going to negative infinity. Feel free to answer those if you have a graph and you can see it. Otherwise, just say does not exist. And then the third and only other possibility was when the degrees are equal. I think this is probably more common to show up um, on the ACT. But when the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, your horizontal asymptote is y equals leading coefficient of numerator over leading coefficient of denominator. So coefficient, just a fancy math word for saying uh, the number being multiplied by it. Leading coefficient would be the number that's being multiplied by x that has the biggest exponent. So that would be four in the numerator and one in the denominator. So this guy has a horizontal asymptote of four. Again, hopefully you remember that part. What you probably didn't learn in Algebra 2 though is what that means is that it approaches four on the far right and far left. So what I need you to know about calculus is that means if we are asking you what y value is the function approaching on the far left as x approaches negative infinity it would be 4 and or if it was asking what is it approach on the far right 
same answer. It's approaching the same thing. So it really doesn't matter if it's talking about approaching negative infinity or in positive infinity. It's a horizontal <laughs> asymptote. It's approaching the same number on both sides. So the answers to these really just boil down to where the horizontal asymptote comes from. If the degrees are equal, leading coefficient over leading coefficient tells you what number it approaches on the left and the right. If the degree of the numerator is bigger, it doesn't have a horizontal asymptote, so you can say the degrees or the limits don't exist. And the only other possibility is the degree of the denominator is bigger, which means it has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, which means it approaches zero, whether you're approaching from the left or from the right. Okay, so if we flip it over, now we don't have the graph to compare but I'm asking you to describe the right side of this as x approaches infinity, as I'm asking you what y value does it approach the further to the right you go. So you may not write all of this out every single time, but in your mind, you need to be thinking about, well, what's the horizontal asymptote? Since the degrees are equal, it is leading coefficient over leading coefficient. And if he has a horizontal asymptote at one, whether I'm asking you what is it approach on the right or left, your answer is going to be one. That's what a horizontal asymptote is. Okay, over to the right, I'm asking you to describe the y value it approaches as x goes further to the left. So once again, in your head, you should be thinking which horizontal asymptote rule is it? Again, the degrees are equal, so the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals leading coefficient over leading coefficient. And what horizontal asymptote means is what it approaches on the far left and or the far right. If you remember the horizontal asymptote rules, there's very, very, very little you are tacking on to this. Okay, question number six. I can see the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator. So that's when it has no horizontal asymptote. And what that really means is that this graph's going to infinity on one side and probably going to negative infinity on the other side. If I have that visual, if I'm provided that graph, I might be able to say infinity or negative infinity. But without a calculator, without the graph provided for you, just say does not exist. That's the safer. It's, it's a little bit more general, but it's also acceptable. Okay, so that's all it really boils down to. Degrees are equal. Horizontal asymptote would be y equals leading coefficient over leading coefficient. And what horizontal asymptote means is what does it approach on the far left or the far right? All right, and then the other two, these two look much more complicated, um, but with limits, if you have more than one term like this, you can just do them separately, so I need you to know that. So you could work out this part, see that he has a horizontal asymptote of one, so he's approaching a y value of one as you go there. Over here, this guy has a horizontal asymptote of two, and then you can do those separately, and if it says add them together, then you add them together. So if you can do one term like above then you can do multiple terms like below. Again notice I really didn't care if it said as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. It's basically the same thing for how we're using it. And then finally question nine. This guy has a horizontal asymptote of one. This guy has a horizontal asymptote of one. So the far left of this graph of all of this the further left you go the closer you get to a y value of zero. We don't need to see the graph. Our knowledge of horizontal asymptotes basically is the, you've already done the big leg work. You just need to understand what a horizontal asymptote is and how that could be asked in limit notation instead of algebra notation. So finish copying that down and then go to the next one, please, the practice. That would be, the practice will end up being number 75.
So without a calculator, without trying to graph these, go ahead and start trying to answer these and see what answers you come up with. And in a minute, I will pick um, a couple of them to go over with you so that if you are making a mistake, hopefully we can catch it and you don't have to redo this one. But again, all of these questions should be pretty quick. So I, I would hope you wouldn't spend more than about five minutes on this entire on this entire worksheet. But I'll give you a couple minutes and then I'll pick out a few select questions for you to compare with mine. What you needed. Okay, uh, you're gonna have to get it off the website or something later. I've moved on from that. Um, I'm going to pick out three questions to go over with you, so just a, a sampling of the three, the only three possibilities you have to answer. So question one would be a good one. Um, if I just look at them in order here, it's question seven. So let's look at one, seven, and... Uh, 13. Did you all have enough time to get that far? Okay. So question one, looking at this rational function, since the degrees are equal, I know he has a horizontal asymptote at y equals leading coefficient over leading coefficient. And what that means is whether he's approaching the far right of the graph or the far left, same thing, you should come up with three. 
You don't need to do any more or any less than that. That's what you would do if the degrees are equal. If the degree of the numerator is bigger, that probably means it's going to infinity on one side, negative infinity to the other side. But if it does not have a horizontal asymptote, you can say it does not have a limit. Whether it's infinity or negative infinity, either way, those numbers don't exist. So that's what you would do when the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator. And then finally, question 13, the only other possibility, when the degree of the denominator is bigger, it has a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0, which means the far left and far right of the graph approach 0. So it doesn't really matter if it's saying as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. Your answer and your work should be the same, so don't let that throw you off. I will also give you a piece of advice here, some caution. This typically is one of those skills that students don't struggle with very much, so then they don't worry about it, and then they don't think about it again, and then when they see it on the test, sometimes people forget what to do. I mean, obviously, you don't want that to happen. These can be some of the easiest and quickest questions and your next test will have a couple of those on there. So, all right, so go ahead and finish that up, please. Let me double check. Yeah, the website does have the answers. So if uh, you wanna spend a couple more minutes, if you didn't finish that page up, finish it up. Check the answers um, online, or maybe one person in your table group check the answers for everybody, and then if there's any of those that I can um, help correct any mistakes on, I would be happy to. And then once you do that, you can work on the mid-unit review. So again, it's just like two or three questions from each day that we've been in this unit. So it should kind of show you if you know how to approach each question, if you don't, which questions is it that you need to ask about? Which type of questions will you need to study before we get to the test? But again, we're about halfway through this unit, so it's kind of a good little uh, checkpoint. My website does not have the answers to those questions, but again, those questions are exactly the same from previous worksheets. So if your binders put together, it should be pretty easy to flip back a page or two and see what you got from a previous day. Obviously, if there's any of that you would like me to re-explain to you, um, today would be a good day. As I've been saying since we started this unit, we really try to break it into very small, manageable pieces for you day by day, but you can't let yourself fall behind. you guys are welcome to work on this mid-unit review together and help each other out but do yourself a favor and circle the questions that you needed some help on or you had to look up something um, if you didn't remember it if you didn't remember it from just a couple classes ago <laughs> you should not expect yourself to remember it in a few classes from now so it would be nice to have those questions circled and you would know exactly what to review and you wouldn't have to start on some of that from scratch. Yeah. Colin, here's the, I think that's all you need. And once you guys finish that, get any help that you need to get on that. Make sure you feel pretty good about it.
got uh, 65 minutes to do that, so even going pretty slow and steady here should be way more than enough time. And the only assignment I'm asking you to turn in today is 75. You need to put 75 in the Google Classroom. That's the one that I just went over three questions with, but when you finish it, check your answers, make corrections, then throw it in Google Classroom to make sure you get those homework points. Thank you. 
please let me know if I can help and where. Just either bring it up here or call me over.